Welcome to today's webinar presented by Supercoder.com. Supercoder.com is an online coding solution offering Part A and B coding reference tools, resources, and not more than 30 specialty coding and compliance newsletters from the Coding Institute in one site. I hope you enjoy this short session. Away. So the first thing, we want to look at our PowerPoint presentation. And we want to go, first of all, to the second slide. What the purpose of this audio conference is, is to hopefully give you some tools to increase your practice revenue, or at least may, hopefully you can maintain it, uh, and maybe simplify your billing and collection work and help you to navigate some areas in your CPT book. It's also helpful if you have your current year's CPT book available. I'm not sure if we will be in it because I've given you a lot of material within your handout, but at least have it available should we need to turn to anything. And for those of you that have just gotten your snapshots or any kind of downloaded email from anybody about the 2013 uh, codes, you should be really happy you're in GI. There was only a handful of changes, and you'll see that when we do our update towards the end of the year. Um, but for myself, who also teaches cardiology and some of the different um, specialties, there were over 100 in other specialties. So be really happy that uh, you're in gastro right now because you're, you're going to have a much easier time of it coming into 2013. So let's go to let's jump over to slide five. One thing I'd like to you know kind of really get into and start the program with is really how to handle a patient as we we move into and this is going to help you be successful in your practice, hopefully from start to finish. So again, we're not just talking about coding. You know, we have our our coding updates and things like that. This is more of a a coding challenges, billing, collections, and we're going to we're gearing it towards the the GI specialty. But to start that off, you really have to look at your patient registration and really how the patient is is intaked into your office. You know, what what is their first impression from an administrative perspective? So either you do it over the phone or they're checking in. You're getting complete demographic and insurance information as well as, as, you know, hopefully if you have an opportunity to verify their insurance and know that you are the provider they can see they're not coming out of network. But then also if you do this over the phone before they come or if you're sending them paperwork before they come to your practice, make sure that you're also verbally getting that verification of that demographic. Uh, one thing that's very important is that street name and address. Right now there's edits in the Medicare system that will um, uh, basically deny a claim if they see a P.O. box when they have in their system the patient has a street address or if the, you know, the patient's moved and has not updated their address and there's a red flag if there's a different zip code. And so we also want to avoid transposition of numbers too. Remember when you're dealing, and I, I pick on the Medicare patients only because we have to be so exact when it comes to the information. Even though we have third party payers and you know other other carriers as well where they're looking at information as well. Medicare is, is pretty clear that you know they, they will deny for certain things that are they're not matching what's in their system. And with our Medicare patients sometimes when they fill out paperwork, you know, memory is an issue and they don't always remember the correct information. In the future when you have to do collections, you want to make sure you can see here phone numbers, emergency contacts, cell phones, uh, relatives, primary care physician, their physician, their PCP, and then make sure you get any uh, inf employer information. Also, make sure you're scanning into your electronic health record if you're doing any kind of insurance card copies, uh, and then collect your copays and any balances due. And then make sure there are billing staff available to discuss your financial policy, and we'll talk about those agreements in a second. Also, whenever somebody is uh, verbally and also in in person, verifying this information, make sure that person person puts their initials in your system, so you know who to go to to follow up with that. And that should be a mandate in your office, not a suggestion. So know when to collect a copay. You know, follow up test results, office visits, possible nursing visits. Uh, when would be the the copay exceptions? You know, if you just do a blood pressure check or a medicine check. Or let's say patients coming in just for a, a minor, maybe just procedure endoscopy or something, and they they may or may not have a copay. So you want to make sure you're understanding uh, when a patient uh, has those copays when they don't, and don't always take their word for it because they're going to want to say, obviously, we don't have a copay. And which leads us into your financial policy, which is on slide six. So, and I put Supercoder is the fastest growing online reference tool with more than 25,000 subscribers. Call 866-228-9252 to get a free product demo 
or sign up at supercoder.com for a seven-day free trial.